I don't want to get to a point where I have six, seven units that are negative cash flow, but I have huge equity potential only to be wiped out by great recession or a dot-com crash or something. It's it, The game of real estate investing, in my opinion, is long-term. It may not be sexy, but it works. Screw cash flow. You should bet on appreciation. Folks, inflation is a feature, not a bug. Folks, something I get asked all the time is, Zuber, why do you preach cash flow? It is far sexier to talk about appreciation. If you truly believe that inflation is a feature, why don't you lever up your assets to zero cash flow, build the largest foundation of assets that lets inflation run ahead? Because again, you have a good job, you're safe and secure. If you really want to do this thing, you should be betting on appreciation and screw cash flow. Who the heck could live on 200 bucks a month anyway? You are really doing your community a disservice by pitching cash flow. Alrighty, folks, let's get into this. I have been asked this more than a dozen times. Why do I preach, preach cash flow instead of appreciation? Well, frankly, folks, first, let's acknowledge I understand the math. I understand the math of building a large foundation. I understand the math of squeezing equity to get the next unit. I understand the feeling of, hey, I can afford small negative cash flow because, again, we are playing a bigger game. So, again, I understand the math. Unfortunately, I live in the real world. And I have been doing this for 20 plus years. I have gone through several different events that would blow someone out if they were betting on appreciation and appreciation only. What do I mean by this? Well, again, if you are betting on appreciation, it means you are squeezing the equity from your portfolio where cash flow is zero or slightly negative. Unfortunately, in the real world, sometimes bad things happen to good people and sometimes bad things happen to good plans. I knew many a person who was levered up in the last cycle that did not survive. And as you know, if you've read our book, One Rental at a Time, not only did we survive, but we thrived. In the real world, surprises happen. Sometimes there are job loss, divorce, real estate crashes, falling rent, rising insurance, all lists of things. And if you are not in a position where you can handle multiple surprising events, you could unfortunately become what I call a motivated seller. If you get into a situation where you have no cash flow, you may have some emergency funds, you may have reserves, but if you get enough bad things happen at one time, you may be put in a situation where you have to sell assets. And again, that is the key. I live in the real world where I had a job that I was good at, I liked, I wasn't about maximizing risk. In fact, if you know my story, I was more about, hey, let's just get to four properties. We'll do a video on that later. But again, because we were not equity constrained or because we had thousands of dollars in cash flow when the Great Recession came, we were able to pivot. Once again, when, we were, uh, when rates crashed, we were in a position where we could go back and squeeze uh, cash flow by lowering mortgage rates. Again, I understand the math. The math is rather straightforward. The bigger the asset base, the longer that you can hold, the bigger your wealth gets. It is a very, very sexy story. But again, you could find yourself through no fault of your own in a situation where you were squeezed and in desperate need of liquidity. The other things that I believe is I don't believe on stacking debt on your primary home. This probably some baggage from when I was a young man. Again, when you are housing insecure and there is a threat of losing your home through foreclosure or short sale, that is not a good feeling. And one of the things that I was desperate to never do was risk that for my family. So that said, we did have a home equity line on our main primary home. However, if or I should say when we used it, my full job for the next however long it took was to pay off that equity line. So again, we did have an equity line. We did use it. But anytime we did use it, 
we we focused on paying it off because we didn't want to put our house at risk. Something else that I'm a desperate or I'm a fan of is you need to have each unit cash flow stand alone. I have had many people say, Michael, why don't you go take equity from property A, squeeze it to the brim? Yes, it may turn into an alligator or negative cash flow. That's okay. You're going to buy another asset that will make up that difference. Again, I understand the math. Perhaps I am way too conservative. I am playing a game, have always played a game that is decades long, and I never want to bust out. I never want to have a property that can't stand alone. So I will certainly lever up. We did plenty of cash out refis. We did plenty of 1031 exchanges, but every asset, every time stood by itself. I don't want to become a um, motivated seller. The other thing is when I got started, I liked my job. No, I loved my job. I was good at my job. I wasn't one of these people that was saying, hey, I have to grow as fast as possible. When you attack a situation like real estate and you say, I have to grow as fast as possible, you could find yourself in a risky position. You may be over levered. You may have negative cash flow. And if stuff in your life or the real estate market changes, that is not the place I want to be. For me, it was not fast growth. It was peace of mind. And again, remember, right or wrong, my goal through this whole journey was simply to get to four single family homes. I thought if I could get to four single family homes, have my tenants pay those off over 30 years, I would simply have a better retirement than most. Again, my journey is my journey. My baggage is my baggage. I understand how sexy it is to say bet on appreciation. Why are you going for cash flow? Folks, if you hear somebody out there talk about cash flow sucks, uh, bet on appreciation, we don't live in the same world. We are not playing the same game. I am playing a game that's 10, 15, 20 years in the making. I am not trying to convert a little bit of money into more money, hoping that I don't crap out. It's not a game I want to play. I don't want to get to a point where I have six, seven units that are negative cash flow, but I have huge equity potential only to be wiped out by great recession or a dot-com crash or something. It's it, The game of real estate investing, in my opinion, is long-term. It may not be sexy, but it works. So again, I understand the math. I understand it is sexy to talk about being a millionaire with leverage. We are not playing the same game. One rental at a time, one cash flow unit at a time, that is the game that I want to play. Hopefully this makes sense. Go ahead and check me out. All my videos on YouTube. Go to my website, One Rental at a Time. And heck, go to Amazon and buy one of my books. Remember, the first book is One Rental at a Time. But the second book is 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. And I wrote that book for you. You know what, folks? Let's take a panoramic view of what I'm looking at behind me here. One sec. Yep, we are in a little city of Iceland, just about ready to go to Greenland. And yes, folks, that is snow on top of that hill. It was really cold last night. Actually, it's really cold right now. Take care of yourself. Have a great day.